Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This is going to be a performance update for the GPD Micro PC, which you can see right here. GPD has released an update via the UEFI to boost it from its default 6 watt to a new 10 watt uh, nominal. Now, what the reason why they did that is because the heatsink can handle it. The highest that I've ever gone to is 63 degrees Celsius, even when running it for a while. So it can more than handle the heat output from the Celeron chipset, the Atom type of chipset, on this with the integrated heatsink on here. So it's a really good heatsink. However, going from 6 watt to 10 watt is a 65%. Is that right? If 10% is 0.6 watt, 5% is 3, 50% uh, is 3 watts extra. So that'd be 9 watt. Yeah, so it's like 65%, 65% greater, uh, more power. You're, you're using 65% more power from 6 watt to uh, 10 watt. Now, this is a previous comparison that I showed you if you remember this video. This is a comparison of the GP2 in one and the N4100 being the GPD Micro PC. This is, both of these are at 6 watt, and you can see that they're pretty much the same. The only thing that we have better here is better CPU score because of that, that cache that's on here. We have less execution units, but they run at a higher frequency. Now, what happens when we give the system, allow the system to use 65% more energy? Well, what happens is we get a, in this case, within regard to 3D applications, running games and stuff, you get a 23% uh, performance increase. Uh, it's not exactly the best use of that power. It is relatively easy to clock your speeds down to use less power. And I'll show you that really quickly. And you can set it up fairly easily as well. So it's not terribly difficult to... For those people that are like, oh, geez, I don't want to constantly use 10 watt, you don't have to. Um, it is nice that for people that didn't want to muck around with getting up to 10 watt, it's far easier to go down than it is to go up um, with regards to getting throttle stop working and all that other, like trying to get around barriers and stuff. It's just far easier for the system to want to use 10 watt as opposed to the other way around. So I'll show you that real quickly. And you can see how very rapidly you can switch between the two. Now, uh, this is the not this is CloudGate at six watt, and that's CloudGate at ten watt. And once again, you can see that we're at that twenty three percent performance increase. Here is Cinebench Cinebench R fifteen. You can see that we're getting one hundred and eighty three CBs. This is at six watt again, and if we go to ten watt, we get two hundred and forty seven. So if we were at before previously, we were at let's just say it's uh, eighteen. So that is eighteen is ten percent. Uh, 36, 52, is that right? Uh, we got a little bit more, it's 40%. It's almost a 40% increase, is that right? 35, 40% increase for CPU. Um, <clears throat> and that's literally the most that you should expect out of this. And that's where you're going to get a bigger bump as it applies to CPU based only types of performance increases so that the delta, the diminishing returns that we get from using 65% more power, and even though we're getting 35% better CPU score, uh, it's a little bit, it's significantly better than the 23% that we're going to get from running games and stuff. But again, this is the GPD micro PC isn't something that you really should be using for games. Um, so I think it's I think it's worthwhile, and especially I'll, I'll demo later how easy it is to go down. This is CPU Z at six watt, and this is CPU Z at ten watt, and you can kind of see if we get up close to it, we can kind of see that the single threaded CPU gains aren't really that great, and that kind of corresponds to Geekbench as well. So we're only getting um, like a ten percent boost here, and this kind of kind of shows you the difference of what you should expect here because <clears throat> single while well, single threaded speeds have increased they haven't increased greatly but the biggest benefit is our multi-processing score because we're going to be able to give all of those cores all of the energy so the multi-core score goes up um, a little bit better than single core scores do now this is just something so that we can kind of see it because I'm going to go right back into this metro test. You can see that I was getting around 41 FPS. You can see that the CPU package power is 6 watt. And right here, this 6.118 watt, that is the total amount of system power. That is the LCD, the Wi-Fi, the RAM, the SSD. That is everything running and how much power it's taking. So this is... Um, quite a bit more efficient than the Win 2. The Win 2 will chew up quite a bit more power system-wise outside of the SOC. For the SOC power and the total system power to be so close together is ridiculously uh, impressive. And I think of uh, talking with GPD themselves, they're saying that this MIPI panel is very, very uh, uh, efficient in terms of power usage. And I am seeing that. Like, it's, it's very... 
Uh, it's impressive to see six watt and near six watt usage out of total system power. So it's, uh, uh, what is it? 10%, uh, 10% more than what you're using. Is that right? Uh, no, a little bit, 12, 20%. Is that right? That would give me 7.2. No, it's 5%. What is that increase? Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm wasting time here. I'm digressing. Uh, over here, you can see this watt hour and that's the watt hour of the battery. Now the battery is 25 watt hours. This is the end of the comparison stuff. Kind of just getting you up to speed of the previous comparisons that I did and we're getting up to what we're, we are now. So I am going to run Afterburner and I'm going to run Hardware Info so that we can get some metrics on screen. Go here, go here. And I'm going to once again run Dolphin just so that we can kind of see it. The nice thing about running this at 10 watt and giving those CPUs a lot more power is that we're getting near full frame rate on Metroid. It's still not the best. You're going to find it hitching around a lot, um, but it's far better than what it was previously. So um, for anyone that was planning on using this for emulation purposes, it is a bit better. Um, so we'll go ahead and show you this. Hopefully without showing my face. You can see my Mario shirt. I almost feel like I should uh, cut down on these lights here just so that we can focus a bit better. Just a moment. Alrighty, that's a bit better. So we'll go ahead and, and load my save state that I have here. Alrighty. So now you can see that we are using 4.5 watt. This is because I am using throttle stop right now. So if I were to go to uh, control shift five, Oh, I'm loading my save state. Control shift zero. Uh, you can go ahead and see that we're going to start bumping up our TDP to up to 10 watt. And this is how it will be normally. You can see that we have considerably better frame rate. Before we were going around like 45 FPS around this area. And now we're kind of floating around 60, going down, dipping down to 50. But it's largely playable. Every now and again, there are little hitches that happen, go down and hit 40 FPS as things get loaded. But for the most part, it's fairly, fairly usable. So this is the part that I want to kind of concentrate on. You can see that we were kind of hovering around 10.5 watt and we're down to eight, eight watt right now. It's not to say that your system is going to constantly use 10 watts, even though the 10 watt TDP is there. If it, if it does, if it's not necessary, it will only spike up to using 10 watts. And you can kind of see this by kind of drawing a lot of stuff on the screen. Let me bring this back down. And interestingly enough, you can see that as we're polling the total system use, it's actually getting a little bit lower than the SOC, uh, the package power from the Intel chipset itself. Here is the total watt hour of the battery itself, which is around 25 watt hour. So the idea is, is that if you wanted to, right now I'm using throttle, throttle stop and I'm using uh, hotkeys. So if I did control shift six, I'm gonna go ahead and lower my package power, my TDP down to 4.5 watt. And you can see that uh, our frame rate tanks as a result and audio sync is way off. And total system power goes down to five watts. So basically at this wattage, at this 5.5 5 watt, let's see how bad it can possibly get. Again. The second wattage that you're seeing is total system power, not just the SOC. So if I were to go ahead and bump up the brightness, you'll see this start to climb up higher as well. So now we're at 6.26 watts with full brightness. And that's, you know, at max. So at, at full brightness and this 4.5 watt setting, you will get four hours of battery life. It's pretty, you know, just straight math. How many times does six go in the 24 and you got four? You got four hours. Now, likewise, if you were to go to 10 watt TDP and at full brightness, you can see that we're going up to like 11 watt. Now, again, this is only if your machine is chugging along using everything that it needs to. When it's just CPU alone it and not using the GPU as much, obviously the TDP is not going to be as high as this. But if you were to put full brightness on and be playing, you know, something like Dolphin to, if you wanted to, uh, the anticipated battery life that you should expect when you're going up to like 11 watt is literally two hours. So um, this 10 watt boost to the GP micro PC can make battery life as worse as two hours and, and change, like two hours and 10 minutes versus four hours um, previously. Well, obviously the this is 4.5 watts, so we can get, we're getting considerably less 
Oh, I didn't do it right. So now I'm going down to 4.5 wide. Let me go ahead and escape from here just so you can kind of see what's going on um, with that. I can close this. So right here you can see I have throttle stop. And basically the only thing that I'm doing is I, I have two, two profiles. This one's battery and this one's performance. And the only thing that happens between the two of them is a turbo is enabled or disabled. So very, and this is very rapid. You could actually tune throttle stop to be a far better, far more efficient, getting your wattage down to what you want. But this is a very simple means of limiting your wattage, your TDP on your on your micro PC, um, so that you're not just using battery power like crazy. Um, so that's it. That's that's the update to the GPD micro PC. It has received a significant performance increase. Um, it, you know, with the judgment of that, it's using a lot of power. There is diminishing returns. It's not a one for one for that power use that you're going out to. Again, it doesn't mean that you will have two hours of battery life all the time. It just means that worst case scenario at 10 watt TDP, you'll have two hours of battery life. If you're just kind of on the internet and doing other things, it will make things speedier and then slow down again. Well, it'll automatically throttle that TDP lower unless there's like crazy ads or stuff running in the background. But um, for the most part, I think it's a positive thing that they did, and you can still control it. Anywho, as always, thank you for time, and thanks for watching.